so uh, as an extension of simple harmonic motion just as an extension of simple harmonic motion uh, this entire business of waves and wave motion disturbance propagating through a medium that's the objective just a few remarks before we get into the thick of things see if there is a particle that's executing simple harmonic motion let's say this is the y direction this is the mean position say y equal to 0 and execute simple harmonic motion with amplitude a in the y direction say and with angular frequency omega then the displacement characteristics of this particle would be like a sin omega t right this is what we learnt in oscillations basic oscillations right a is the amplitude of motion omega is the angular frequency right a would be about the energy of the particle square of the amplitude is proportional to the total energy of oscillation and omega is the frequency is the frequency these are two independent attributes of oscillations now this motion suppose started at t equal to 0 this particle let me call it particle 1 it started to execute simple harmonic motion y equal to a sin omega t at time t equal to 0 suppose there was a second particle particle 2 that started to execute an identical kind of motion that started to execute an identical kind of motion but its motion started a little later its motion started a little later say its motion started at t equal to t naught it executed exactly the same motion but its motion commenced at t equal to t naught now given this same amplitude same angular frequency just that the motion started a little later then the description of the motion of this particle 2 the description of the motion of this particle 2 would be given by a little alteration of this let's say this was description of motion of particle 1 then particle 2 executed motion y means y2 means it's displacement in the y direction referred to y equal to 0 would be a sin omega t minus t naught yes or no would you buy this from me would you buy this from me right its motion start because at t equal to t naught its y is 0 right that's what happened how many of you are okay with this idea you're all okay right so that's the difference in motion essentially the same kind of motion but this particle commenced its motion at t equal to t naught whereas this particle started its motion at t equal to zero yes or no right now once you understand this fact then let me right away jump into matters that are relevant say there was an elastic medium say there was an elastic medium and in this medium there was a disturbance incited there was a disturbance incited at some point of this medium let me call the point where the disturbance was incited let me call that point as x equal to 0 right and say this was the x direction along the medium along the medium right and a disturbance was incited where the particle started to execute simple harmonic motion the point or the region where the disturbance was incited in that region the particle started to execute simple harmonic motion with amplitude a and angular frequency omega clear so this particle the particle at the origin the particle at x equal to 0 started to execute simple harmonic motion as y equal to a sin omega t 
a sin omega t. A is the amplitude, omega the omega the angular frequency of oscillation of this particle. Now, once again, it might make you wrongly believe that the particle is necessarily executing simple harmonic motion in the y direction. In fact, just to demarcate, to, to explicitly represent, I made it feel like the particle is executing simple harmonic motion in the y direction. But when I say y equal to a sin omega t, it might just be the case that the particle is executing simple harmonic motion in the y direction with amplitude a and angular frequency omega or the particle could also have been executing simple harmonic motion aligned with the x direction as a sin omega t. Right? Just for a clearer representation, I, I'm making it look like as if the particle is executing simple harmonic motion in the y direction. But all the mathematics that I derive based on this would be for both situations. Particle, the only important thing is the particle executing simple harmonic motion with amplitude a and angular frequency omega. It might happen in this direction or it might happen in this direction does not matter all right one way or the other one way or the other there is a disturbance that is incited at some portion of an elastic medium some portion of an elastic medium right now we will assume that these disturbances y, the level of disturbances y at various instants of time are not too large. If they become very large, then see these disturbances represent deformation of the medium. They represent deformation of the medium. If the particles of a medium are executing simple harmonic motion, it is a measure of deformation of the medium. Now, if you want the medium to maintain its elastic properties, then you do not want the deformation to be very large. Because if the deformation y is at any given instant of time becomes very large, then the medium will lose its elastic properties. And all that we write and do and say and represent will become dead defunct. Okay? So we don't want to do that. We will assume that at all times, under all situations, the displacement of any particle of the medium is such that it does not result in loss of elastic properties of the medium. Okay. Now Again, owing to elastic properties of the medium, elastic property is one where the med if the medium is deformed, it's capable of getting restored to its original shape, size, dimensions. That's what by elastic properties. Its capability to get restored to its original dimensions once deformed, right? <coughs> okay. So why is a sin omega t? a certain region in which particles start to execute simple harmonic motion with given parameters. Okay. Owing to its elastic behavior, it is not like the particles are isolated in the medium. right? They are connected. This particle, this particle, once it starts to execute simple harmonic motion, it will communicate that to the neighboring particle. But then, it is not like that the communication would be instant. The neighboring particle will start to execute the same kind of motion an instant later. Based on the manner in which, based on the elastic properties of the medium, the neighboring particle will re respond commensurate and will start to execute simple harmonic motion of the same amplitude and the same frequency. Same frequency, angular frequency, omega. And this disturbance, this disturbance progressively moves along the x direction inciting one particle after the, the other, inciting one particle after the other to execute simple harmonic motion, invoking particles to execute simple harmonic motion of amplitude a and angular frequency omega, right? Now, the, therefore, it is essentially disturbance traveling in the x direction, it is essentially disturbance traveling in the x direction disturbance propagating in the x direction in which only one part of the medium is disturbed and other portions of the medium respond because of traversal of the disturbance. Now, this disturbance travels at a rate, right? This disturbance has a velocity with which it travels through the medium. This disturbance has a velocity with which it travels through the medium, right? And 
the velocity with which this disturbance travels through the medium is called wave velocity. Switch it off, please. No, it's not mine. <coughs> I'll comment on the nature of the ringtone later. <laughs> but for the time being, we were talking of disturbance only. <laughs> okay, never mind. So, so this disturbance travels through the medium along the x direction with a velocity which depends on the medium properties. What kind of medium properties? Two kinds of medium properties. One, the elastic properties of the medium. Two, the inertial properties of the medium. When I talk of, see, the disturbance travel through, travels through the medium with a velocity v, with a velocity v, velocity with which the disturbance travels is v and it depends on two things. One, the elastic properties of the medium and two, the inertial properties of the medium. Inertial properties means say for example density of the medium or mass per unit length. Density of the medium or mass per unit length etc. Right? So, this velocity with which the disturbance travels is called the wave velocity, is called the wave velocity. It does not depend on the nature of excitation here, it is only the medium properties. Some other source would come here and disturb this portion of the medium and cause an amplitude a and angular frequency omega. But then a different angular frequency omega and a different amplitude a yet the wave velocity would have no bearing on that. The wave velocity it is only the wave the medium is only ready to take the disturbance but the manner in which it is going to help the disturbance propagate through the medium is entirely the prerogative of the medium. right? No, nothing at all, nothing at all. Until and unless, you know, there is a bomb blast and the medium loses its elastic properties, then of course it has no my bap, but, <laughs> but otherwise, otherwise it is going to move with a velocity that the medium dictates. The medium will dictate the velocity. Frequency is fundamental. Medium has nothing to do with the frequency. Omega, the angular frequency, omega is 2 pi n. So sometimes if I say frequency, you know, I would actually mean angular frequency it, because omega and n are only separated by a factor 2 pi. All right. So, <coughs> frequency is fundamental. It does not depend on the medium. It depends on the source. If I have a tuning fork whose frequency is 512 hertz and if it is used to create excitations here, then the excitations would be of frequency 512 hertz. But if I, if I change the tuning fork to a 1024 hertz tuning fork, then that is not going to change the wave velocity. All that it would change is the omega with which the particles execute simple harmonic motion. That is all, right? The, as far as the intensity is concerned, very shortly I will communicate that that intensity of the wave will actually be a jurisdiction of the amplitude of the wave, right? Intense, we will we'll learn very shortly, intensity will be proportional to the square of the amplitude, but let me not jump to those matters right away. So basically, a portion of the medium, elastic medium disturbed and that disturbance propagates through the medium with a velocity referred to as the wave velocity, right? Now, <laughs> essentially, the excitation of the particle, see, one is a particle, say, a portion of a medium or a particle right in this case what i have shown is as if the particles are executing simple harmonic motion like this vertically right and perpendicular to the execution of simple harmonic motion the wave propagation is perpendicular to that right the wave propagation is perpendicular to the direction of execution of simple harmonic motion. So, when the wave propagates perpendicular to the motion of the particles, then the corresponding wave motion is called a transverse wave, it is called a transverse wave. 
transverse wave just in case you want to make a formal note of it <coughs> if the direction of wave propagation just note down if the direction of wave propagation is orthogonal is orthogonal means perpendicular if the direction of wave propagation is orthogonal to the motion of the excited particles to the motion of the excited particles of the medium then it is referred to as a transverse wave then it is referred to as the transverse wave Sometimes the particles execute simple harmonic motion like this and the disturbance also travels like this. Neighboring particles get contaminated and influenced by this motion. The disturbance travels in this direction progressively influencing the motion of those particles. Right. So in this case the motion of the particles is like this. The disturbance is also traveling this way. So when the motion of the particles is parallel is parallel to the direction of wave propagation then the wave is referred to as a longitudinal wave write down if the motion of prop if the motion of uh, particles is parallel is parallel to the direction of wave propagation direction of wave propagation then the disturbance is referred to as then the disturbance is referred to as a longitudinal wave a longitudinal wave also write down just a passive note for the time being I will activate this later on but buy it from me right now uh, when a longitudinal wave travels through a fluid travels through a fluid then it is characterized then it is characterized not just not just by the displacement of the constituent particles not just by the displacement of the constituent particles of the medium but constituent particles of the medium but also but also the pressure variations that occur in the medium but also the pressure variations that occur in the medium along the wave propagation along the wave propagation right isn't it see if, if particles are executing motion like this let us say in a gaseous medium and the disturbance is also traveling this way then you would find compressions and rarefactions occurring in the medium and those result in pressure variations in the direction of wave propagation right. So bear this in mind we will we'll describe this at greater length later on but for the time being this much right. So, so pressure variations become very relevant descriptors of longitudinal waves longitudinal waves. No, not for transverse waves, not for transverse waves because see it is not compressing the medium or rarefying the medium. It is only you know stretching the medium and coming back and restoring it is not going to be relevant for transverse waves. Okay. Uh, now one way or the other 
The basic mathematics of displacement of particles vis a vis time and position uh, will be the same be it transverse waves or longitudinal waves. Right. So, let us get a little general and uh, let us let us address both of them even though I will write y equal to a sin omega t or y equal to a sin omega t minus t naught as motion of a particle at a certain point. This does not necessarily mean that the particle is executing motion in a direction perpendicular to the x direction. It might also happen that you know I am referring to those y's as displacements parallel to the x direction. Therefore, we would automatically end up covering both transverse waves and longitudinal waves with a common mathematics. Right. Now, coming back to this scenario. So, like I said, it is as if you know uh, once, once a child is given education, he then bears the freedom to move with his in his own way. So, that is that is exactly the way the wave proceeds you know the, the medium takes care of its movement its propagation and the rate at which it propagates. So, <coughs> now this was time t equal to 0 when the medium was excited commensurate with y equal to a sin omega t particle at 1 that means particle at x equal to 0 executed simple harmo harmonic motion commensurate with y equal to a sin omega t right. Now, <coughs> the disturbance reached this particle p let us say there is this particle p whose coordinates are x comma 0. It took t naught seconds for the disturbance to reach p say it took t naught seconds for the disturbance to reach p. Hmm. Now, once the disturbance reached p, this particle at time t equal to t naught did what this particle started to do at t equal to 0, right. So, the nature of motion of this particle then, the particle at p executed simple harmonic motion given by y equal to a sin omega t minus t naught, yes or no, right. <coughs> now, we are assuming the medium is uniform with uniform properties. So, the wave velocity in a general sense will not depend on x, it is going to be the same everywhere, right? right? <coughs> Therefore, the time t naught it took for the disturbance to reach p would be given by x divided by the wave velocity, right? This is the displacement between 1 and 2 and it takes place at the rate of v meters per second, it takes place at the rate of v meters per second that is the time it took for the display for the disturbance to reach 2. Yes or no? Right. So, the nature of the description of motion of the particle at x is given by a sin omega t minus t naught. Right. At t equal to t naught it is 0. No? We will assume that there is a when the disturbance arrives here there is a particle ready at that point to receive that disturbance. You will not expect a vacuum position at 2 when disturbance arrives at 2 is not it. There will be a particle at 2 is not it when the disturbance and which is y equal to 0 at that instant of time is not it. <coughs> now, so uh, realize some very basic simple facts. The displacement of the particle at any given x at an instant of time t, the displacement characteristics of a particle at x at any given instant of time t is given by this. t minus t naught, right. This is like a sin omega t minus t naught, t naught is x by v, v is the wave velocity, yes or no, yes. right. <coughs> now, say this particle 1 is executing simple harmonic motion with time period t given by 2 pi by omega, yes or no. So, this particle is executing simple harmonic motion with time period t equal to 2 pi by omega, right? 
right now by the time this particle executes a full oscillation what's a full oscillation for this particle a full oscillation for this particle is let's say this is amplitude position this is another amplitude position it starts from the mean position goes to a comes back comes to minus a and back to this position right that's a full oscillation for this particle that's a full oscillation right and what's the time it took for the particle to execute this capital t seconds right which is the time period of motion of the particle t seconds it took capital t seconds to execute a full oscillation coming back to the same position in the same state of motion right same direction of motion right that's a full time period by this time by this time the disturbance would have moved to a certain point right in this time the disturbance let's say arrived at q the disturbance arrived at q right that means in a time t equal to capital t the disturbance arrived at a point q the disturbance arrived at a point q now write down write down <coughs> the distance traveled the distance traveled by the disturbance in a time equal to one time period in a time equal to one time period is called the wavelength of the wave is called the wavelength of the wave is referred to as the wavelength of the wave that means see the particle one for example at t equal to zero it was here it executed a full oscillation in a time equal to one time period as shown here in this time the disturbance disturbance would have arrived at q right it would have arrived at q right and this distance from bet between one and q is referred to as the wavelength of the wave that means the x coordinate of q is will be then the wavelength of the wave the x coordinate of q would then be the wavelength of the wave yes or no yes, sir. right and this disturbance lambda is the distance traveled by the disturbance moving at the rate of v meters per second in a time equal to capital t moving at the rate of v meters per second in a time equal to capital t the disturbance moved a distance equal to one lambda which is the wavelength of the wave yes or no yes so lambda must be v into t right yes or no the wavelength lambda is the wavelength of the wave but capital t the time period of motion of this constituent particle is 1 by n the frequency of oscillation right capital t the time period of motion would be 1 by n n is the frequency of oscillation in hertz or per second right so this i can write as v divided by n t as 1 by n right this gives me v the wave velocity v as n lambda this gives me v the wave velocity as n lambda yes or no do you all understand this n is a property of the source which cause the excitation n the frequency is the property of the source that caused the excitation v the property of the medium lambda is accommodative it will take clue from v and n and its value would get determined as per v equal to n lambda clear right so wave velocity would be n the frequency into the wavelength of the wave yes or no do you also realize so so essentially particle 1 and particle q if you look at particle 1 and particle q they are separated by a distance equal to 1 lambda the wavelength of the wave 
these are two particles these are two particles separated by a distance equal to one lambda or the wavelength of the wave <coughs> how difficult is it to examine that particle one so particle one at t equal to capital t what is it doing in a full time period it has come back to this position y equal to zero and is headed upwards right look at particle q look at particle q particle q particle q in a time at an instant of time t equal to capital t is at the same level as one is at the same position as one and is also headed upwards deemed to move with an amplitude a and angular frequency omega yes or no right so then now if you start observing one and q do you realize that the, these would be in phase with each other these would be in phase with each other <coughs> yes or no these would be in phase with each other and in fact <coughs> so so we could also redefine lambda as redefine lambda as write down lambda could be defined as could also be defined as the distance between two nearest particles the distance between two nearest particles in phase with each other distance between two nearest particles in phase with each other in fact many particles will be in phase with each other see for example <coughs> i could have had yes say particle 1 particle q separated by a distance lambda will be in phase with each other then let's say move another lambda units from q move to a position r this would be like another lambda traveled when this would have traversed for time 2t seconds this would have traveled for capital t seconds the motion of this would start but in phase with q and 1 right so another lambda you would have another particle another lambda you would have another particle in phase with r and q and one and so on so forth yes or no hmm? now in phase but what's the phase difference between two nearest particles in phase with each other phase <coughs> phase difference see you could two particles could be in phase if the phase difference is zero or two pi or 4 pi or 6 pi in general and even multiple of pi that's when two particles are deemed to be in phase with each other right yes. now in this case if you remember the auxiliary circle treatment <coughs> for particle one let's say this was the auxiliary circle right particle one <coughs> it's corresponding particle on the auxiliary circle it's corresponding particle on the auxiliary circle executed a full revolution executed a full revolution around the circle in capital t seconds that means the auxiliary particle of one of one would have described two pi radians at the center whereas the auxiliary particle of q would have described zero radians at the center in a time equal to capital t right and therefore therefore the phase difference would between the two particles would have been the difference in the angles described by their auxiliary particles till that point of time what's the difference in the angles described by their auxiliary particles 2 pi 2 pi radians therefore the phase difference between 1 and q is 2 pi phase difference between q and r is 2 pi phase difference between r and s is 2 pi phase difference between 1 and r is 4 pi phase difference between q and s is 4 pi phase difference between 1 and s is 6 pi and so on so forth every time every time you move a distance lambda <coughs> you have a phase lag who's lagging in phase the particle whose motion started later is lagging in phase so we say q lags in phase by an amount 2 pi compared to 1 r lags in phase by an amount 4 pi compared to 1 and by an amount 2 pi compared to q in the direction of wave propagation phase lag occurs phase lag occurs a particle whose motion starts a little later 
would be behind us in phase compared to the other particle. <coughs> yes or no? Right? Do you all understand this? So particles separated by a distance lambda differ in phase by 2 pi. Clear? Yes or no? All of you understand this? No? Right. <coughs> now, so coming back to the description of motion of the particles, coming back to the description of motion. So this would give me the displacement of the part of a particle at x at different instants of time. Displacement of a particle at x at different instants of time. This is what it would tell me. So that means it gives me a complete picture of all the particles in the region. It gives me a complete picture of all the particles in the region. At any given instant of time, I can find the displacement of any particle x. Or for any given particle x, I can find its displacement at any given instant of time t using this scenario. How about it? Hmm? No? So, uh, this I may further want to write as a sin omega t minus omega by v into x. Right? Uh, omega by v is what? Omega is 2 pi n. Right? v is n lambda wave velocity. So, this becomes like a 2 pi by lambda and this 2 pi by lambda is commonly described by a letter k and it is called the wave number of the wave. k is called the wave number of the wave. 2 pi by lambda it is called the wave number of the wave. It is called the wave number of the wave. 2 pi by lambda. Clear? <coughs> so, what I do is I could write this as a sin omega t minus k x. Yes, right. So, this is a progressive wave traveling in the positive x direction. This is a progressive wave traveling in the positive x direction it could be sin it could be transverse or longitudinal depending on whether y is perpendicular to x or y is parallel to x right but the same description essentially right <coughs> this since it's described by a sign it's also referred to as a sinusoidal wave. It's also referred to as a sinusoidal wave, sometimes also a harmonic wave, also a harmonic wave, so called a harmonic wave. So, this is essentially a plain progressive wave, a plain progressive wave, harmonic or sinusoidal in character, traveling in the positive x direction, right? Now, you would be tempted to ask me some very simple things. Hey, why sine? Why is it not? No, it could be cosine, that is fine. Cosine is not an issue. Sine and cosine is the same thing. I mean, I could write this as 90 and add 90 and subtract and write it as cosine, which is not an issue, right? Sine, cosine, they are brother, sister. But why is it not like an exponential e power omega t minus kx, etc.? Yes, it could be. It could be. But generally, uh, what we will examine is waves that embrace sinusoidal motion of the particles which happens sinus we can we can actually show that when a portion of a medium I elastic medium is slightly disturbed slightly disturbed from its mean position then the motion executed by the particles of the medium in that location would be harmonic motion simple harmonic motion and therefore the very natural description would be a sinusoidal description and so on and so forth. But not always true. We will talk of waves or pulses that have different kinds of description also, but our focus would be on sinusoidal description of motion of the particles, right? So why don't you say sine? No, I said it could be anything. It could be anything except that is exactly why, what I have told you. If I, if I slightly displace the particles of a medium, they will execute simple harmonic motion. Right? And then it will not be tan, isn't it? Simple harmonic motion of particles cannot be described by tan. Also, another reason why we will not have
and still call it wave motion because tan for a certain value of x can become very large yes or no and if it becomes very large then the elastic properties of the medium will go for a 6 right therefore a motion cannot be described by a function a wave motion cannot be described by a function which for a certain combination of x and t will cause y or the displacement of constituent particles to be very high and therefore disrupting the Ill fundamental elastic properties of the medium if we have punctured the elastic properties then there won't be any wave propagation wave propagation is occurring because the medium has elastic properties absence of which will not cause the wave to propagate isn't it you know what i'm saying <coughs> so we don't want to rupture the elastic properties of the medium and therefore a description like tan omega t minus kx is not good now, <clears throat> and in fact, let me just make a mention of it for the time being, but we will come back to it <coughs> with greater fervor, but a few remarks, few remarks in a very general sense, make a note of it, but, but I will describe those things later on, but let us say if the displacement of the particles is a function of some a x minus b t say a b are positive numbers a b are positive numbers if the displacement is like a function of some a x minus b t which is what say omega t minus k x was is a function of a x minus b t kind of a thing right hmm? so if I have displacement of the particles at various instants of time for various values of x going this way a function of a x minus b t i mean when i say a x minus b t or b t minus a x if it's a function of a x minus b t it's also a function of b t minus x which is the same thing it doesn't make any difference but if a and b are positive numbers for the time being make a note that this would represent a disturbance traveling along the positive x direction with a velocity <coughs> b by a with a wave velocity v b by a this represents a disturbance traveling along the positive x direction with a velocity b by a <coughs> In a very general sense, again, y equal to f of a x plus b t. Hey, which is the same as saying y is a function of some some function of minus a x minus b t. Because I can take minus common from this, and it will be a function of minus a x minus b t. It's the same thing, right? When I say a function of a x plus b t or a function of minus a x plus b t, right? Then. It and a and b are positive numbers and a and b are positive numbers then it represents a wave traveling in the negative direction of the x axis <coughs> it's a wave traveling in the negative direction of the x axis <coughs> and again the wave velocity will still be given by b by a So, when I say y is f of a x minus b t or y is f of b t minus a x, both will represent a wave traveling in the positive direction of the x axis with wave velocity being b divided by a, wave velocity being b divided by a, right. <coughs> now, So let us say if this was a disturbance, what, what it essentially gives me is everything about the disturbance. A description of this kind, it tells me <coughs> at any given instant of time, 
I can plug in the various values of x, I can plug in various values of x and get the displacement y, displacement y at that instant of time for different x's. That means that is a snapshot view of the wave. That means I look at this instant of time and I capture and I take a pick of the disturbances at various x. right? So, that gives me what? The displacement at a given instant of time for various particles at various values of x, x at a given time. At a given time, if you capture the displacement of various particles of that medium, then that is called a snapshot view of the wave. That is called a snapshot view of the wave, right? A snapshot view is just about the displacement at a given instant of time for different values of x. I would know where which particle is at that instant of time. That is a snapshot view of the wave. You know what I am saying? Nay, did not understand this. See, when I am inciting a disturbance, right? Say at x equal to 0, I am inciting a disturbance, right? <coughs> and let us say the disturbance affected a certain portion of the medium. Then at t equal to 3 seconds, different particles would be at different positions. Different particles would be at different positions and so on and so forth. Depending on the nature of the wave, different particles would be at different positions. That means, now if I am able to take a picture of this at this instant, that means at that instant I will get the displacement of various particles. This particle has this as its displacement. This particle has this as its displacement. So, this kind of a thing is called the snapshot view of the wave. That means, what you see of the wave at a certain instant of time, what you see of the disturbance levels for various particles at a given instant of time is the snapshot view of the wave. Yes or no? Right? <coughs> In fact, Although too early to talk about all this, but I, if I differentiate y with respect to x, keeping t constant, I explain the notion of differentiating partially. Differentiate y with respect to x, keeping t constant. What will I get? I will first differentiate f with respect to this using chain rule. That will give me f dashed ax minus bt. f with respect to this, keeping f with respect to ax minus bt would give me f dashed ax minus bt. Then ax minus bt with respect to x keeping t constant will give me a, will give me a. That is chain rule. Yes or no? <coughs> now, if I differentiate y with respect to x one more time, that is like dou 2 y dou x 2. That means differentiate this again with respect to x. Differentiate this again with respect to x that will give me <coughs> a squared f double dashed a x minus b t yes or no right hmm. now if i differentiate y with respect to time keeping x constant then do you realize i'll get like a minus b f of a f dashed a x minus b t Tell me. Yes. Right now? Yes. Hmm? No? Differentiate this with respect to time. So, what you do is differentiate f with respect to ax minus bt first. That will give you f dashed ax minus bt. And then ax minus bt with respect to time, keeping x constant will give me minus b. So, minus b. Nahi kya? No, they are the same. This is differentiating f with respect to ax minus bt, which is going to be the same. Right? And then I differentiate y with respect to time again. Dou 2 y dou t 2 is b squared and then differentiate this again. So, that is f double dashed a x minus b t. Yes or no? Do you all understand this? Nay? Right now? Now, <coughs> this I write as a squared and the f double dash t x minus b t I 
procure from dou two y dou t two by b square, right? This f double dashed I procure from this equation and plug into this equation, right? So then I end up getting a squared by b squared <coughs> dou two y dou t two. Yes or no? Where b by a is the wave velocity. Wave velocity is b by a. Wave velocity is b by a. Clear? So this is like 1 by v squared dou 2y dou t2 is what I get. Dou 2y dou t2. Hmm? You understood this? Nay? Nay, I can explain the whole thing again if you want. You understood this? You understood this? Okay. Then all that I did is I took f double dash ax minus bt from this, which is how much? f double dash ax minus bt is dou two y dou t two divided by b squared. So this f double dash ax minus bt I substituted here as one by b squared dou two y dou t two, and this is what I get. Got? Got me? Nay. Where b by a is the wave velocity, so b squared by a squared is v squared, so v squared dou 2y dou t2, right? Do do. <laughs> d is differentiating fully, do is differentiating partially, that is why do do. And what is in a name? You call it go yaar. Go, go. Uh, okay, let it go this time. So, uh, dou to y dou x2 is 1 by v squared dou to y dou t2. This is the basic differential equation of a progressive wave motion. This is the basic differential equation of a progressive wave motion. In fact, if there is an equation of this kind, then the solution to this equation would be y equal to f of ax minus bt. The solution to this equation is y equal to f of ax minus bt. Whenever you write this equation and you say solve this equation, what it means is find y as a function of x and t. That is the solution. Then y as a function of x and t would be this equation. That will be the solution to this equation. right? So, this kind of a uh, variation of y, x, v and t will give me, will give me the profile of a wave motion. That is a wave motion which is f of a x minus b t which is a progressive wave, which is a progressive wave. Now, see again this will be related to surfaces. This will be a tangent surface. It is also the gradient in three dimensional space, but do not bother about it. In a general sense there is an operator, I will only confuse you if I start talking of that operator in general. This also has geometrical implication, but and also an implication in three dimensional space of a tangent plane and so on and so forth. Too early to even ponder over it, uh, that will be an issue to handle in the first year at IIT. Okay? But for the time being, imagine this to be only a partial derivative, but it has very, very simple geometrical connotations as well, which is also related to gradient of surfaces. It would be about surfaces. Now, so far so good, right? Hmm? <coughs> See, <coughs> so <coughs> something like this y equal to a sin omega t minus say omega t minus kx is a plane progressive wave traveling in the positive x direction, where k is the wave number 2 pi by lambda omega is the angular frequency, omega is the angular frequency, right. <coughs> now, now, 
for a given x, right? Let me talk of a particle at x equal to x naught. Let me talk of a particle at x equal to x naught and characterize its displacement at various instants of time t. A particle, a certain particle p at x equal to x naught, right? That's given by a sin omega t minus k x naught. A sin omega t minus k x naught, right? Hmm? <coughs> now, this particle has time period which is 2 pi by lambda. Two, <coughs> sorry, 2 pi by omega has time period which is 2 pi by omega, right? That means y at x naught at a given instant of time t is the same as y equal to x naught at a time t plus capital T. Yes or no? See? Yes. This is displacement of a particle at x naught at a given instant of time t and the same displacement for the particle gets replicated capital T seconds later. Capital T seconds later, right? <coughs> Look at different particles x vary at a given instant of time t. At a given instant of time t naught at a given instant of time t naught, let me examine various particles. The various particles then would be, would have their displacement a sin omega <coughs> t naught minus k x. Yes or no? Hmm? Right? <coughs> now, So now I am talking, this is the snapshot view. At a given instant of time, this will give me the displacement for various values of x. And therefore, it is going to be a snapshot view of the wave at an instant of time t naught. For different t naughts, you will get different snapshot views, right? Now, now, if I look at two particles, one at x, the other one at x plus lambda at the same instant of time t naught. Two particles separated by a lambda will be in phase with each other and therefore will have the same disturbance levels. Why? Will have the same disturbance levels. Why? Yes or no? Right? So y at x plus lambda at a given instant of time is the same as y at x at an instant of time t naught. Right? So, this lambda, this capital T is called the time period of the wave, this lambda is called the space period of the wave, it is called the space period of the wave. Lambda, the wavelength could be looked upon as space period. Right? Hmm? <coughs> capital T is the time period. Lambda is the space period. Every time move a distance lambda, you will find the motion replicated in all possible ways. Right? That is why space period. Capital T is the time period because every capital T seconds later, if you are observing a given particle, you will find it to be in an identical state of motion. Yes or no? Hmm. <coughs> also, Notice if I look at a particle 1 and a particle 2 and they are separated by a distance lambda, right? And let us say this is the direction of wave propagation. If these are two particles separated by a distance lambda then the phase difference between them is going to be 2 pi, right? Phase difference between them is going to be 2 pi. Who would be smaller in phase? 2 would be smaller in phase compared to 1 because its auxiliary particle would be behind, would be behind by an amount 2 pi, by an amount, technically by an amount 2 pi, right? So, particle 2 lags behind in phase compared to particle 1 by an amount 
2 pi right as you keep moving in the direction of wave propagation the phase the phase decreases the phase decreases yes or no as you keep moving in the direction of wave propagation the phase decreases yes or no yes, sir. right <coughs> see the phase for example you know <coughs> phase for example the total phase not the phase constant at a given instant of time for various particles is omega t naught minus kx yes, sir. yes or no that's the phase at a given instant of time t naught for various particles at x that's a phase phi right so very clearly the phase versus x the phase versus x is a straight line with negative slope phi versus x is a straight line with negative slope the slope is k therefore phase dips linearly phase dips linearly in the direction of wave propagation phase dips linearly in the direction of wave propagation yes or no do you all understand this hmm? which means now you can apply the shopkeeper's method dukandar's method to this that means if you have two particles separated by a distance lambda then <coughs> the phase difference between them would be 2 pi right if there are two particles <coughs> let's say particle p and particle q in the direction of wave propagation and say they are separated by a distance delta x if delta x is the separation between them and i want to find the phase difference between these two particles and i want to find the phase difference between these two particles then i'm going to apply shopkeeper's method phase difference is when the separation is lambda phase difference must be 2 pi by lambda into delta x when the phase when the separation between two particles is delta x yes or no this is the phase change per unit separation 2 pi by lambda gives me what phase change per unit separation so if the separation is delta x this would be the phase change this would be the phase difference so the phase difference between these two particles is going to be 2 pi by lambda into delta x delta x is the path difference between the two particles delta x is the path difference between the two particles so phase difference is going to be 2 pi by lambda into path difference delta x so this is 2 pi by lambda into path difference delta x <coughs> 2 pi by lambda into path difference delta x clear is that okay <coughs> now <coughs> what would be the phase difference between two particles that are separated by a distance lambda by 2 what would be the phase difference between these two particles pi because lambda would mean phase difference 2 pi lambda by 2 would mean phase difference pi yes or no lambda would mean phase difference 2 pi so lambda by 2 would mean phase difference pi that means p and q would be out of phase with each other they, they would be at the same mean position at the same instant of time but while one would be going up the other one would be going down and they would differ in phase by an amount by they would be in opposite phases they would be in opposite phases yes or no hmm? <coughs> now <coughs> say the snapshot view of the wave say the snapshot view of the wave <coughs> which means y at x and t like i told you the displacement at a given instant of time for various values of x or vice versa for a given x at different instants of time is given by let's say a sine omega t minus kx c 
साइन ओमेगा टी माइनस के एक्स एंड के एक्स माइनस ओमेगा टी बोथ आर ट्रेवलिंग वेव इन द पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन ऑफ द एक्स एक्स बट इफ समन एडवाइज ए साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस के एक्स दैट्स गोइंग टू बी अव ट्रेवलिंग इन द नेगेटिव एक्स डायरेक्शन राइट now so if i am talking of a snapshot view at time t equal to t not snapshot view at time t equal to t not clear <clears throat> then displacement of particles at different axes at an instant of time t not would be given by a sin omega t not minus kx <coughs> then i'll get displacement of particles at various values of x at a given instant of time t not right hmm? and say i was successful in clicking the picture of the displacements y of various particles right <coughs> so the snapshot view then turns out to be a sin curve at time t not this is all the displacement of various particles at an instant of time t not for various values of x say it turns out to be this right which would be a sin curve which would be a sin curve why versus x is going to be a sin curve where if you take x is separated by lambda then they'll be in the same displacement states they would be in the same velocity states two particles separated by lambda at any given instant of time would be in the same state of motion they would be in phase with each other right now <coughs> why for various axes at a given instant of time t not clear now now Say this is a wave. Moment I write omega t minus k x or k x minus omega t. It will always be a wave traveling in the positive direction of the x axis. But if I write omega t plus k x, it's going to be a wave traveling in the negative direction of the x axis, right? Huh? Why should it always start from the origin? At x equal to zero, a sine omega t is not zero. If I just do the graph of y is a sine omega t, then at t equal to zero. Why zero? But why always, yeah? No, no. In that case, x is negative, na? When it's traveling in the negative direction of the x-axis, so that x will be negative. So slope of uh, associated with that would be. still negative in the direction of wave propagation phase will decrease are socho na don't go by just equations don't become a slave of equations look at it like this if there is a disturbance traveling this way there is this particle here which got excited at t equal to 0 the particle here would have got excited at t equal to 1 second so will this particle not be behind phase so in the direction of traversal of disturb of the disturbance phase will always decrease because the following particles will start to execute shm later later so their auxiliary particles will be behind and therefore they would always lag in phase got me no it will not be a mirror image of this certainly not <coughs> now now look <coughs> your attention please snapshot view of the wave that means i have arrived at the displacement of various particles at a given instant of time and i have captured them all at the same instant right and now i that means there is a particle here the particle at a given x is here this is the displacement of this particle here the particle that was at x at this instant of time is here the particle that was at x was now here got displaced by this amount this was the displacement of this particle at this x at an instant of time t now how would i know if this particle is moving up or it's moving down 
that means an instant later whether this particle would be found above this position or below this position i need a model to describe that yes or no this is a snapshot view at an instant t naught how would i know if at t naught plus 0 0.00001 whether this particle would be moving up or it would be moving down right i would want to know that isn't it hmm? now <coughs> Look, look at this equation. If I differentiate this with respect to time, keeping x constant, if I differentiate y with respect to time, keeping x constant, that means I am ending up addressing the velocity of a particle at x at various instants of time, particle velocity. I repeat. If I differentiate y with respect to time, keeping x constant, that means keeping x constant, that means I am talking of a certain particle, that means I am talking of a certain particle, a certain particle, right? Then what would I get? Will I not get the velocity of that particle? Yes, yes. Given x, if I differentiated y with respect to time, then I have got the velocity of the particle at that x, then I have got the velocity of the particle at that x yes or no yes, that means this do y do t is vp particle velocity at x particle velocity at x at an instant of time t this will give me the particle velocity right is that okay now at a given instant of time t, right? At an at an instant t, at an instant t. Moment I talk of an instant t, that means all that I am looking at is the displacement y of various particles at that instant, which would be this. This is at an instant t, for example. This is at an instant t, for example, right? Displacement of various particles, right? Then that means it's as if t is constant. That means it's as if t is constant, and I get the snapshot view of the wave. And now I say, do y do x? What this would give me is the slope of the tangent at x at an instant t, at an instant t, it will give me the slope of the tangent dy dx is the slope of the tangent, I am talking of a fixed instant of time, so dou y dou x would give me the slope of the tangent at x, at a certain x, yes or no, hmm? at a given instant of time t. So dou y dou x will give me at a given x the slope of the tangent, this is the slope of the tangent at this point. Yes or no? The slope of this line, the slope of this line will give me actually dou y dou x at t. This will give me dou y dou x at t, the slope of the tangent. How about it? Let us see, let us see. We will we'll understand. Just give me a few minutes. <coughs> now, let me first find the velocity of this particle. How would I find the velocity of this particle if I differentiate this with respect to time keeping x constant? If I differentiate this with respect to time keeping x constant, I will get the particle velocity. Perfect. Right? <coughs> so, that is going to give me a omega cos omega t minus kx. That is a particle velocity. Right? What is dou y dou x? Slope of the tangent at that x, slope of the tangent at that x and how do you obtain that? Differentiate this with respect to x keeping t constant. So when you do that, you get minus a k cos omega t minus k x. Yes or no? Do you all understand that? 
if I differentiate this with respect to x keeping time constant, differentiate sine with respect to this you will get cos and then differentiate this with respect to x you will get minus k, is not it? Chain rule of differentiation, no? All of you are okay with this right? Okay. <coughs> now, if I divide this by this, dou y dou t divided by dou y dou x. dou y dou t divided by dou y dou x, what will I get? Minus vp, <coughs> that will give me minus omega by k, that will give me minus omega by k, yes or no? But dou y dou t is particle velocity vp, dou y dou t is particle velocity vp, vp then is minus omega by k into dou y dou x, yes or no? Hmm? So far so good, right? Now, <coughs> see omega by k, I repeat, omega is 2 pi n, k is 2 pi by lambda, so that is n lambda which is wave velocity v which is wave velocity v. So, this I can write as minus v dou y dou x, right. So, this gives me particle velocity is minus v dou y dou x, yes or no? This is cardinal. Particle velocity now related to wave velocity is minus v dou y dou x. Now listen to me carefully, a simple interpretation of this, but so far so good, right? Yes, sir. Hmm? <coughs> what was my objective? My objective was to know whether the particle P is poised to move up or come down, right? That, that means in this case, since the wave is traveling in the positive x direction, V is positive. If wave was traveling in the negative x direction, if someone told you, then v would have been negative, the sign of v, wave velocity, right? What is dou y dou x? Dou y dou x is the slope of the tangent. That means if this angle is theta for this particle, then dou y dou x is going to be tan theta. Then dou y dou x is going to be tan theta. Now for this particle p therefore, do you realize tan theta, theta is acute, so tan theta must be positive for the particle that I have marked there, right? So tan theta positive for the given particle at this instant of time yes or no yes, sir. because theta is acute. So then dou y dou x is positive yes, see dou y dou x is tan theta positive so V p then turns out to be negative V p negative. If V p is negative that means particle must be moving down, particle must be moving down yes or no very contrary to an initial belief when you would see a particle here and you would think well hey, so the particle must be moving up not really right the particle is actually poised to move down however if same was the snapshot if same was the snapshot of a wave traveling in the negative x direction then v would have been negative tan theta positive Vp would have been positive and the particle would have been poised to move down, up, I am so sorry, up, Vp would have been positive, the particle would have been poised to move up then, yes or no? So Vp is minus V dou y dou x applied to a snapshot for various particles will tell me which particle is headed where, up or down, right? Say if I looked at a particle Q here, a particle Q here and I want to figure out whether this particle is moving up or moving down. So now V is positive anyways, for Q, this would be the tangent drawn at Q, 
this would be my theta. So for q, tan theta would be negative. Do y do x would be negative for q, yes or no? <coughs> do y do x would be negative for q? So this is negative, v is positive into negative positive. So vp is positive, vq is positive. So q is headed upwards. Q is headed upwards. How about it? Hmm? Yes or no? Huh? No, no, particles are moving up and down. This is the position of various particles that lie on a sine curve. So? No, some particles will be moving up, some particles will be moving down. Isn't it? Why should particles be moving up at the same instant of time? Then? Or why should all particles be moving down at the same instant? Hello? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. See, what he's saying is after delta t, sec t seconds, we take another snapshot view. Then based on that snapshot view, we'll discover the direction of motion of that particle at that instant. So the same particle sometimes would be moving up and other times would be moving down. Depending on the snapshot view at that instant of time, we would know whether the later instant would be would tantamount to the particle moving up or moving down, right? That is how it is. Vp is minus V dou y dou x. Dou y dou x will give me the slope of the tangent at any given x for the snapshot view. V would give me the wave velocity, would be positive if the particle is traveling in the positive direction of the x-axis or negative. Dou y dou x could be positive as is for P and would be negative as is for Q. Based on that, you would discover the sign of Vp and that will tell me if Vp is positive, particle moves up. If Vp is negative, particle moves down. That's the way it goes. Yes or no? Hmm? Where? Can, do you really think the slope of a sine curve will ever be tan 90? There is no point on the sine curve where the tangent will become vertical. It will become horizontal. Where dou y dou x will become zero. Right? But, but see, one thing. For a particle here, you don't have to apply equations. If this particle has reached its upper extreme, the only way it can handle things is it has to be going down. Isn't it? And this part, isn't it? This particle has zero velocity. So Vp is 0, so we can't say too much. Therefore, we, you just apply ordinary common sense. For, for a particle here, you know it has to be going down only. Is it not? Are you confused? Little confused? No? Shashi Gupta, no? All right. <coughs> so Vp is minus V dou y dou x tells me whether a particle is moving up or is moving down. Can I wipe this off? Then also it will have VP positive or negative, isn't it? Kaise bes sasura? Hey, hello. I think I think there are too many concerns. Let me. He is saying, Sir, Budbak banate hain. Is particle wa ka kya hoga? Arre, koi Budbak nahi banate hain. Dekho, is particle ka tangent to ye hai na? Sasura. Tan theta, dou y dou x is negative for this particle, yes or no? Dou y dou x negative into negative positive into v positive, vp positive. This particle is headed upwards. Please ask questions. Otherwise, I'll ask questions. <laughs> Hello? Huh?
राइट वो तो फिगर देख के मालूम पड़ता है फिगर नहीं तब तो नहीं करेंगे जरूरत क्या है उसमें इक्वेशन लगाने का उसमें डो वाई डो एक्स जीरो है तो उससे डिवाइड नहीं कर सकते हैं ना तो ये इक्वेशन नहीं लगाएंगे वीपी जीरो है उससे नहीं बता चल सकते कि पार्टिकल आप जा रहे हैं कि डाउन पर डायग्राम से पता चलता है हमको सबसे ऊपर है पार्टिकल तो नीचे ही जाएगा सबसे नीचे है तो ऊपर ही जाएगा हेलो ओके सो इज इट कंफ्यूजिंग नो ना ट्रांसपेरेंट और यू हैव डाउट्स प्लीज आई आई एम नो रश टू जस्ट फिनिश ऑफ थिंग्स ओनली इफ यू गिव मी अ ग्रीन सिग्नल आई एल मूव टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेज ग्रीन नाउ सो Let me look at the intensity associated with a plane progressive harmonic wave. Harmonic moment I say harmonic its description would be a sine or a cosine. no why, why do i say it's a plane progressive wave what it really means is can i use your notebook see what is done is this is a certain plane at x equal to 0 this is a plane at all points on this plane are at x equal to 0 what i actually do is when i excite vibrations when i excite disturbance then i am exciting all particles of this plane right then particles in a parallel plane will get affected in due course so the disturbance then travels in parallel planes the disturbance then travels in parallel planes yes or no yes, right that's why a plane progressive wave and this disturbance is on this plane after a while it moves to a parallel plane and so on so forth right so these parallel planes are called wave fronts these are parallel wave fronts these planes are called parallel wave fronts parallel wave fronts no all that i'm saying is see this is a plane okay at x equal to 0 all points on this are at x equal to 0 and that's a positive direction of the x axis and i excite vibrations on this plane so all particles start to execute simple harmonic motion with amplitude a and angular frequency omega on this plane okay then they affect the particles in the neighboring parallel plane then these particle particles start to execute simple harmonic motion identical but with a phase lag and all particles in this in a given plane are in phase with each other right then i move to another plane the pa the plane parallel to this so these these see at any given plane all particles are in phase with each other and therefore this is called a wave front locus of points on this plane this is called a wave front it's a plane wave front we then say it's a plane wave front it's a plane progressive wave the disturbance moves in parallel planes and in a given plane all particles will be deemed in phase with each other they are excited at the same instant of time by a certain source therefore they would execute the same kind of motion starting at the same instant right <coughs> now one moment now this is a certain plane of disturbance and let's say the disturbance is traveling like this let's say the disturbance is traveling like this okay and now and now <coughs> what i do is uh there is a certain amount of energy flowing through this plane there is a certain this plane has a certain area and there is a certain amount of energy flowing through this plane while the disturbance is traveling right through this plane there is a certain amount of energy flowing right energy passing this plane every second there is energy passing this plane that means in watts energy passing through this plane every second is energy in watts divided by the area of this plane will give me energy passing through this plane per unit area of this plane perpendicular to the plane perpendicular to the plane you know what i'm saying energy passing through this plane in a given time 
per unit area of the plane perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation that is called the intensity of the wave watts per meter square. Energy passing per unit time would give me watts divide by the area of this plane will give me watts per meter square that means intensity of the intensity of the wave that will give me the intensity of the wave yes or no right i want to now calculate the intensity of a plane progressive wave i want to calculate the intensity of a plane progressive wave okay <coughs> now <coughs> Let's say this was a certain plane. This was a certain plane. Hmm. And let's say the area of cross section of this plane is like this, this way. Area of cross section of this plane, let me call it S because A denotes the amplitude of the disturbance. Let me call this S is say one unit area. One unit area is the area of cross section of this plane. Right? <coughs> now, there is a in one second there would be a certain amount of energy passing through this plane in one second there would be a certain amount of energy, energy passing through this plane and that energy will flow at a velocity equal to the wave velocity that energy will flow with a velocity equal to the wave velocity yes or no yes. right that means in one second the energy that has flowed past this plane in one second the energy that has flowed past this plane it would manifest itself somewhere Yes or no? See, energy is flowing past this plane in this direction. In this direction, energy is flowing past in this direction. And would it not manifest itself in some way? At first of all, at what rate will this energy flow? At the rate of V meters per second. It will flow at the rate of V meters per second, the wave velocity. Energy will flow with a velocity equal to the wave velocity, right? Now, the let's say in one second, there is a certain amount of energy that has flowed past this plane. Hmm? Where does it reflect itself? Where does it appear? That energy will excite in one second that disturbance would have traveled V meters. In one second that disturbance in time t equal to one second that disturbance would have traveled V meters yes or no. In one second whatever be the energy flowing past it that would have traveled V meters because it is traveling at the rate of V meters per second. <coughs> that means now in one second in one second it would have energized all the particles in this region if it has traveled v meters then in one second it would have energized all the particles in this region yes or no yes sir right and if it has energized all the particles in that region then the energy of all these particles in this region must have been the energy that must have flowed past this plane whatever is the energy that has flowed past this plane where has it appeared it has appeared as the energy of all these particles in this region because in one second the energy has traveled v meters yes please either say a yay or a nay so that i feel confident to proceed otherwise there is tremendous loss of confidence in my teaching skills if you are silent sedate and passive okay so be active rude aggressive see <laughs> this is a dying wave <laughs> come on <laughs> it would have been best if you had remained silent at that okay in any case so if i can calculate the energy of all the particles in this region then that would be the energy that i am seeking energy flowing past this flowing past a unit area in one second clear now the particles of this medium this medium let's say has density rho let's say the density of the medium is rho what is this this is a certain region with area of cross section one meter squared and length v meters what's the volume of this region yes sir, sorry volume of this region is v into 1 right v into 1 is the volume of this region v cubic meters is the volume of this region what's the mass of this entire region rho into v rho into v is the mass of this entire region yes or no yes, sir. 
right? Out of phase. <laughs> you were all out of phase. <laughs> Each particle of this region of total mass rho into V executes simple harmonic motion. Each particle of this affected region where you are calculating the energy, total energy of all the particles, each particle is executing simple harmonic motion of amplitude A and angular frequency omega. omega. Yes or no? <laughs> I must keep a timer. Press the buzzer and there you go. Yes sir. So, uh, if there is a particle executing simple harmonic motion with amplitude A and angular frequency omega, then the total energy of oscillation that it has is half of mass into omega squared into A squared. Yeah half of mass into omega squared into a squared yes or no Ka total energy of an oscillator huh huh maximum velocity omega is the maximum velocity of any part that means velocity at the mean position half of m into omega squared a squared i have taught some simple harmonic motion to you here yes, so that's the total energy of oscillation of a particle with angular frequency omega and amplitude a yes, ah that's better thank you so much obliged so if there is a mass rho into V, the en en total energy of oscillations here is going to be half of the total mass that you see rho into V into omega squared into A squared. That's the energy of all the particles in this affected region. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore this must have been the energy, this must have been the energy that must have flowed through a unit area in one second this therefore must represent the intensity of the wave this therefore must represent the intensity of the wave so the intensity of the wave is given by this in watts per meter squared and very clearly you can see intensity is proportional to the amplitude intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude right now hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry? No, we are talking of a plane progressive wave. This is the energy of a plane progressive wave. I will come to spherical wave fronts, cylindrical wave fronts, different profiles. Let me come to that. But in a plane progressive wave, this is how it will be. The total number of particles. Hello? <laughs> no, we are, there can be, but we are, see there is disturbance in the y direction of course. Yeah, yeah, in, that's a, that's a three dimensional wave. Yes, in a very general sense, there can be a three dimensional wave. In the y direction, in the z direction, all is possible. But that would be the most general thing. We, we, we actually talk of that kind of a wave. Hello? <coughs> Huh, yes, yes, yes. In a general sense, I mean, if it is say displacement in the x direction, y direction, z direction, there would be a net displacement r, x i plus y j plus z k. We can talk of that also, isn't it? Which should have an x component, which should have a y component, which could have a z component. Right? That could have happened, isn't it? Yes, please. <coughs> so this is the intensity of a plane progressive wave proportional to the square of the amplitude. Omega you can write as 2 pi n if you require, otherwise you can just leave it like this. Right? Now, <coughs> in case of <coughs> longitudinal waves, see sound waves are longitudinal waves. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. For longitudinal waves, the unit of intensity is not watts per meter squared. I mean it can be used as watts per meter squared, but is Practical, the practical unit of intensity, the practical unit of intensity is not watts per meter squared, uh, practical unit of intensity in acoustics, that means sound engineering, sound engineering, see 
it's decibels decibels mathematically intensity is calculated in watts per meter squared but a practical unit of intensity is not watts per meter squared for sound waves for longitudinal waves it's decibels it's decibels now if if i calculate the intensity in i watts per meter squared and i want to convert it into decibels and i want to convert it into decibels then uh, the in acoustics to convert into decibels db decibels from i if i want db's the decibels then the transformation is 10 log i divided by i not to the base 10 10 log i by i not to the base 10 where i not is the weakest sound that a human ear can register normal human ear the weakest sound it has been found experimentally is 10 to power minus 12 watts per meter squared is considered to be the weakest sound that is audible to a human ear 10 to power minus 12 if if i have i in watts per meter squared and i want to convert it into decibels then i take the log of this to the base 10 and multiply by 10 10 log i by i naught to the base 10 that will give me the intensity in decibels this is done for sound waves for sound waves right i i'll <coughs> I'll also tell you, you know how they arrived at this, but it'll be spending like another half an hour on this. So I don't want to waste time on that right now. Not too relevant, right? This is the energy that has flowed in one second. This is the energy that has flowed in one second past one meter squared, isn't it? So this is actually the energy per unit area per unit time, isn't it? Because this is a, the energy that has flowed in one second. The energy contained here is the energy flowed in one second past a meter squared, isn't it? So energy, why are you so restive? Huh? This is the conversion. No, matlab, why should? 1 meter will only be 100 centimeters. How many conversions would you need from meter to centimeter, dude? Is there any shortcut? Abhi aur shortcut kya hoga, Sasurega? Yehi hai, yehi hai. Logarithmic scale mein chota ho jata hai number. Moment you take log, wo chota ho jata hai. Isi liye log lete hai. Yes or no? Right? <laughs> Can I wipe this off? <laughs> Some of you give me real unadulterated entertainment. <laughs> I want to thank you for doing that. Now, <coughs> let me <coughs> talk about superimposition of disturbances, right? Let's say there are two independent uh, disturbances propagating through a medium. There are two independent disturbance that disturbances that are propagating through a medium. And uh, one disturbance wanted to cause to this particle a displacement y1. One is traveling through the medium proposed all by itself. If nothing else was there, it would have caused a displacement y1 to a particle at p at a certain instant of time t. Right? Another dis disturbance traveling through the medium if nothing else was there, would have proposed a disturbance y2 on the particle. Then the principle of superimposition says that the part, the net disturbance of the particle would be the algebraic sum of v1 and v2. The particle then 
would get disturbed commensurate with y1 plus y2 the algebraic sum of y1 and y2 algebraic sum of y1 and y2 that's the principle of superimposition that's the principle of if one if let's say there is one disturbance traveling through this medium and it would have caused this particle on its own to get displaced by 3 centimeters another disturbance traveling through the medium and if it nothing would, would have caused this particle to get displaced by an amount 2 centimeters now if both are traveling through the medium then together they would cause this particle to get displaced by 5 centimeters or say if one disturbance would have caused the particle to move up by 3 centimeters the other would have caused the particle to move down at this instant by 1 centimeter then the algebraic sum would be 2 centimeters upwards the net displacement when both are traveling would be 2 centimeters algebraic sum of the displacements that each disturbance would have caused to this particle that is the net disturbance at P clear it is applicable for n disturbances if there were n disturbances it would be y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus yn that is the principle of superimposition principle of superimposition this is the pr uh, yes Yeah, we will assume that for the time being we will assume that although otherwise we will take the vector vector, vector y1 and y2 right. <coughs> now uh, say there are two identical disturbances say there are two identical disturbances identical means same amplitude and same frequency and therefore same angular frequency two identical disturbances means same amplitude and same frequency traveling in opposite directions traveling in opposite directions let us say they superimpose in a certain region of space superimpose in a certain region of space hmm? we would next try and understand we would next try and understand the characteristic motion of particles in the region in which they have superimposed ok let us say there is a disturbance that is traveling in the positive x direction and that is given by say a sin omega t minus k x this is a traveling wave in the positive x direction with amplitude a and angular frequency omega. omega. This is the disturbance it causes to particles at x at various instants of time t or at a given instant of time t to particles at different values of x. Yes or no? Hmm? And say this is y1, one disturbance which would have affected the median medium in this way. Right? And there is an identical wave train there is an identical wave train y2 which is a sign traveling in the opposite direction so that is going to be given by omega t plus kx that is going to be given by omega t plus kx right now when they superimpose in this region 
the disturbance profile produced in this region when they superimpose in this region the disturbance profile produced in this region would be y equal to y1 plus y2 at any given x for any given x the displacement would be the displacement caused by y1 and the displacement caused by y2 yes or no right so at any given p which is at x the displacement y would be displacement caused by the first wave plus the displacement caused by the second wave train right i can plug in the value of x then i am talking of a particle p how each one of them would affect the displacement of the particle p would be given by how one would affect p how two would affect the p the algebraic sum of these two so i would know y as a function of time for the particle at x i would know y as a function of time for the particle at x how about it no confusion you have a question no now <coughs> So, the particle which is at x succumbs to y1 plus y2. Why the displacement of the particle at x? Displacement due to the first disturbance a sin omega t minus kx plus a sin omega t plus kx. That's a disturbance at various instants of time for this particle at x. I can apply sin c plus sin d. Two sin c plus d by two cos c minus d by two, right? Two a sin omega t cos k x. Yes or no? Now. <coughs> This could be written as 2a cos kx, 2a cos kx sin omega t, 2a cos kx sin omega t is the disturbance of this particle at x at various instants of time t. Yes or no? Now the way you can interpret this is the particle at p has an amplitude, particle at x has an amplitude which is 2a cos coax kx. 2a cos kx is the amplitude of this particle and it has an angular frequency omega. Omega is the angular frequency which it inherited from the two superimposing wave trains. The particle at P now executed simple harmonic motion with angular frequency omega but with amplitude 2a cos kx. Right? That's the nature of motion exhibited by a particle at x. Right? Hmm? Now, if I look at some other particle at some other x, then it will have the same angular frequency omega, but will have a different amplitude. But will have a different amplitude. So now, I have produced a region of variable amplitude. We have produced a region of variable amplitude. Of course, yes. See, can I write this as some ax sin omega t? This is a a function of x, right? So, can I say the particle p is execute, executing simple harmonic motion with ang angular frequency omega and amplitude a? That means amplitude of the particle depends on where the particle is. See, amplitude depends on where the particle is. That means at different values of x, we will get different amplitudes of motion for particles, but they would execute simple harmonic motion of the same frequency, angular frequency omega, but with different amplitudes. So, amplitude would be space varying. We are producing a region of space varying amplitude. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? A, vari a region of variable amplitude is produced. Clear? Hmm? Now, there are points where the amplitude would be a maximum. There are points where the amplitude would be a minimum. In this region of superimposition, in this region of superimposition, there would be points of maximum amplitude. There would be points of 
smallest amplitude right now amplitude would be maximum amplitude would be maximum at a p when cos kx is plus minus 1 see even if it is minus 1 then also the amplitude will be 2a isn't it hmm? amplitude would be maximum when cos kx is plus minus 1 cos theta is plus minus 1 when theta when theta is an integral multiple of pi when theta is an integral multiple of pi then cos theta would be either plus 1 or minus 1 even integ even integer into pi will give me plus 1 odd integer into pi would give me minus 1 right so this would happen at those values of x maximum amplitude would happen at those values of x for which kx for which kx is an even multiple of pi or an odd multiple of pi that means r times pi r is an integer r is an integer r can be 0 1 2 r is an integer at these values of x for r equal to 0 we get a point of maximum amplitude for r equal to 1 we got get a value of x where the amplitude is maximum and so on so forth right if you give different integer values of r you get different values of x where the amplitude would be a maximum and will be equal to 2a will be equal to 2a yes or no hmm? <coughs> now at what values of x k can be written as 2 pi by lambda wave number huh yeah please ask k can be written as 2 pi by lambda and that's into x would be r pi hmm? or <coughs> now if i take consecutive values of r i get consecutive values of x for which the amplitude would be a maximum yes or no if i take r equal to 0 and i get, i take r equal to 1 i get two successive values of x where amplitude is maximum yes or no right see 2 pi by lambda into x can be 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi and so on so forth at these values of x amplitude is 2a and is equal to the maximum it could be right that means at x equal to 0 at x equal to lambda by 2 at x equal to lambda at x equal to 3 lambda by 2 at these values of x you get a maximum amplitude yes or no yes. now these points where the amplitude is a maximum it could be are referred to as anti nodes are referred to as anti nodes anti nodes are points where the amplitude is a maximum where the amplitude is a maximum yes or no hmm? and do you realize that the separation between consecutive anti nodes is lambda by 2 right <coughs> separation between consecutive anti nodes is lambda by 2 separation between consecutive anti nodes is lambda by 2 yes or no <coughs> huh? no see positions may change because see I could have written one wave as a sin omega t minus k x plus 30 degrees and another one as a sin omega t plus k x plus 45 degrees those are also identical waves then these positions will not be important these positions will change but the separation between consecutive anti nodes will continue to be half the wavelength of the wave of the two superimposing waves right hmm? similarly amplitude would be minimum when cos kx is 0 when cos kx is 0 
cos kx zero means kx must be an odd multiple of pi by two. Kx must be an odd multiple of pi by two. Yes or no? That means kx must be some two r plus one into pi by two. Yes or no? Hmm? <coughs> if I write k as two pi by lambda, then k r k x must be two pi by lambda into <coughs> say pi by two, three pi by two, five pi by two, and so on and so forth. Yes or no? Odd multiple of pi by two, one into pi by two, three into pi by two, five into pi by two. Odd multiple of pi by two. Clear? At these values of x, you would encounter points with zero amplitude, right? Zero amplitude. That means <coughs> when x is lambda by four, three lambda by four, five lambda by four, and so on and so forth. These points where the amplitude is going to be the smallest it could be are referred to as nodes. These points are called nodes. These points are referred to as nodes. Clear? Hmm? And do you again realize the separation between successive nodes is lambda by two? The separation between consecutive nodes is <coughs> lambda by two. Yes or no? Yes, now, look at this formation. So we have a region infested by nodes and anti nodes there would be points where the amplitude is neither 2a nor 0 right the amplitude could have been ax could have been 2a or could have been 0 but it could have been anywhere between 0 to 2a that means all particles of this medium will execute simple harmonic motion with amplitudes varying from 0 to 2a with amplitudes varying from 0 to 2a right where special consideration is given to points with 0 amplitude and 2a amplitude, right? Now, notice the formation. Let us say, if I look at an anti-node, 0, then it follows lambda by 4, and then comes lambda by 2, x equal to lambda by 2, then comes 3 lambda by 4, then comes this, then comes this, and so on and so forth. Do you see that zigzag? That means an anti-node will be followed by a node, then followed by an anti-node, then a node and an anti-node. That means you will have alternate nodes and anti-nodes produced in that region. Right? The separation between successive nodes is going to be lambda by 2. So the separation between successive anti-nodes is going to be lambda by 2. However, the separation between an anti-node and the nearest node is going to be lambda by 4. Yes or no? Now, say in this region where the two wave trains superimposed, there was a node, there was an anti node, there was a node, there was an anti node, the node anti node and so on so forth right at the anti node the amplitude was 2a this was a segment between consecutive nodes the particle executed simple harmonic motion this way a particle here executed simple harmonic motion this way this way of amplitude lying a particle here executed simple harmonic motion 2a this a is just the anti node but this 2a is the amplitude <coughs> right 2a up 2a down then again coming down anywhere between 0 to 2a and then at nodes it reduced to 0 so this was the profile of the particles between two successive nodes particles executed simple harmonic motion of amplitudes varying from 0 at the nodes to 2a at the anti nodes right and the region between two successive nodes is called a segment the region between two successive nodes is called a segment a series of segments is formed a series of segments is formed in a region where two stationary two uh, identical wave trains have 
superimposed and this kind of a formation is called a stationary wave this kind of a formation is called a stationary wave I'm coming to why stationary. Come here. I'll tell. Please, no. I, I will not, uh, you know, cause harm to you. Turn around like this. You also come here. Turn that way. Okay. The best representation of a node is this. He will not displace no matter what effort I apply here, right? Huh? So, a node and you are a neighboring particle here and I am some particle just before the node here, okay? This particle will never get displaced. This particles just before him are executing simple harmonic motion, right? Are communicating with him. No, I am not going to. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I am conscious of this because, you know, I do that to myself. So and run into simple harmonic motion. Oh, okay, 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 okay. No, right, right, let's make it simple. <coughs> so, so no energy can go from this region to that region. Why? Because he is not ready to nudge. He's a node, a nerd. <laughs> right? Ca will you find energy from here going no, no. to that region? No. Therefore. If you don't find energy going past a node, that means energy is not flowing out of this segment. Thus, there is a segment before him, there is a segment after him. Because he is a node, he is not al allowing energy to flow past him. Why? How would have energy flowed past him if this node was ready to nudge? But this is zero amplitude. This node is at permanent, is permanently at rest, and therefore this allows energy to flow past the node. And if there is no flow of energy past the node, then that's why stationary. It's not flowing. That's why stationary wave. I've seen. Thanks for being <laughs> such a good node. <laughs> okay. Right? So, now, which means <coughs> the energy in a given segment stays confined to that segment. The energy of this segment is confined to this segment because the nodes will not allow to know uh, to, uh, the energy to flow past them, right? It can neither flow to the left of it nor would flow would it flow to the right of it. Energy of this segment will stay confined to this segment. The energy of this segment will stay confined to this segment, right? No, now no more propagation. It's a region in which they it's confined energy. That's why it's a stationary wave, right? That's all, right? Now, now, <coughs> so it's as if, you know, this is, this is a typical Indian village where gaon ki ladki dousre gaon mein shadi nahi denge. Isi gaon mein uski shadi hogi. You know, so, so now, there would be total energy confinement of this region, total energy confinement of this region and <coughs> What we will learn very shortly is the following. This is a given segment. The region between consecutive nodes is a given segment. And all particles of this segment, even though they would execute simple harmonic motion of the same omega, but with different amplitudes, but these particles will be in phase with each other. In the sense, what I mean is, if I look at this particle, particle 1, and I look at this particle 2, the amplitude of motion of particle 1 is this, the amplitude of motion of particle 2 is this. They are the same omega but different amplitudes. <coughs> Yet, they would be in phase with each other in the sense, 1 would reach the its amplitude position at the same time that 2 reaches its amplitude position. All particles despite having different amplitudes would reach their respective amplitude positions at the same instant of time, would come back to the mean position at the same instant of time, would go back to their lower amplitude positions at the same instant of time. They would be in phase with each other. All particles here between consecutive nodes would be in phase with each other. Right? Now, particles in the neighboring segment would be out of phase with particles 
in this segment that means if the particle here if a particle here is at the mean position and going up then a particle here would also be at the mean position but going down therefore particles in this segment would be out of phase with particles in the neighboring segment i also want you to think about you know based on the equation that i wrote i want you to think about this but the fact that is important is in a given segment all particles will be in phase with each other and they would be out of phase with particles in the neighboring segment yes they will be necessarily out of phase absolutely they would be out of phase with each other always right <coughs> now this is one kind of superimposition this is one kind of superimposition uh, where the wave trains were identical in amplitude and were identical in frequency omega right suppose there were disturbances slightly differing in frequency super point there were two disturbances right slightly differing in frequency and they superimpose at a point let's see what they would produce at a point p say there is a disturbance which is y1 equal to say a sin omega 1t right and there is another disturbance at this point which is y2 equal to a sin omega 2t there were two disturbances superimposing at a point and differing slightly in frequency the angular frequency of this is omega 1 the angular frequency of this is omega 2 now these two disturbances superimpose at the point p then at p what would be the displacement characteristics at p the displacement characteristic would be y equal to y1 plus y2 would be the displacement characteristic at p yes or no which would be a sin omega 1t plus a sin omega 2t yes or no which is like 2a cos omega 1 minus omega omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t sin omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 into t right yes or no hmm? that's how this particle executes its motion we can then say we can then say the particle p is executing simple harmonic motion of amplitude a as a function of time this is a a function of time and angular frequency omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 into t this particle p could have been looked upon as one that is executing simple harmonic motion of angular frequency omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 and amplitude that is a function of time amplitude which is a function of time see this is the amplitude of motion 2a cos omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t is amplitude of the particle same particle but time varying amplitude same particle p but its amplitude is time varying its amplitude is varying as per 2a cos omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t see simple harmonic motion but of time varying amplitude that means at p if the amplitude is varying then at p the intensity will also vary why because intensity is proportional to square of the amplitude yes or no yes, <coughs> now if the two disturbances were sound sound disturbances if the two disturbances were sound disturbances then at p you will hear various intensities of sound at various instants of time at p amplitude is varying as a function of time therefore intensity which is proportional to the square of the amplitude will also vary as a function of time right yes or no yes, therefore at p you will hear sounds of 
varying intensity at P, you will hear sounds of varying intensity. Why? Because amplitude is varying at P continuously, right? Now, when do you, when do you hear a large sound? A large sound would be when amplitude is a maximum, yeah. right? Right? At P, at P, largest sound. is heard when cos of this is plus minus 1 then square of the amplitude would be maximum right when cos omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t is plus minus 1 then you, then at these instants of time you you'll hear maximum sound at p yes or no right which means <coughs> when cos theta is plus minus 1, theta must be an integral multiple of pi. That means at instance of time when omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t is 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi and so on and so forth, you will hear large sounds. At these instants of time, you are going to hear large sounds because intensity would be maximum, square of the amplitude would be maximum at these instants. That means <coughs> omega 1 minus omega 2 is 2 pi, omega 1 is 2 pi n 1, omega 2 is 2 pi n 2, n 1 and n 2 are the frequency of oscillation of each of the particles, right, each of the disturbances, right. So, this would give me n1 minus n2 by 2, 2 will get cancelled into t equals 0 pi, <coughs> pi will also get cancelled. So, 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. At these instants of time, you will hear a large sound because of a, because of the difference in frequencies, because of the difference in frequencies, right then at these instants 0, 1 by n 1 minus n 2, 2 by n 1 minus n 2, 3 by n 1 minus n 2, you hear large sounds. At these instants of time you hear large sounds, right? And the time interval between two large sounds is the same, yes or no? Do you realize that the time interval delta t between two large sounds is 1 by n 1 minus n 2 seconds? Interval between two large sounds is 1 by n1 minus n2 seconds, yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? That means you will hear, say, a large sound at this instant starting now. Tuck, 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 tuck. This is what you will hear, right? These small sounds you may not hear, silent you won't, silence you won't hear. There would be silence also at these points. That happens when cause of this becomes zero. Then there will be silence at this point, In, uh, sound of intensity 0, that is silence, right. So, you will hear large sounds at successive intervals because of this kind of superimposition at a given point when the frequencies are different, frequencies are n1 and n2 of the two superimposing disturbances, clear? Yes. 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 Now, now, if I increase the difference in the frequency, suppose I increase, then delta t will decrease. Interval between two successive large sounds will decrease then, then you will hear like a tuck, 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 tuck. interval between two tuck decrease, right. <laughs> if you, yeah, yeah, once, if you keep on increasing n1 that means if the difference between the two superimposing frequencies keeps increasing then delta t will keep decreasing then you will hear like a tuck 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 <laughs> further increase n1 minus n2 you will tuck 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 eventually if n1 minus n2 gets to a certain value then delta t becomes so small that interval between two large sounds becomes so small that you will hear almost like a monotone because the separation between two large sounds is really small. You can't distinguish between two large sounds. You are hearing 
all together mm. yes or no yes, sir. <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not able to create the exact musical effect i would have liked to but as long as you can register what i'm trying to say it should be okay okay this <laughs> Mm. That's what you'll hear. Okay, delta t will become infinity. Now, <coughs> which means, you know, so it's the resolution of the human ear. If the interval between two large sounds is really, really small, then you will not be able to distinguish between the two large sounds. It's as if you are hearing them one right after the other. you will not see an interlude between the two large sounds right it's as if it's all continuous tag this is how you'll hear right <coughs> so if you want to be able to distinguish between the two large sounds do not make n1 minus n2 very large do not make n1 minus n2 very large right now typically how large uh if n1 minus n2 does not go more than 10 it's found that the human ear 10 or 12 it's found that a normal human ear is i mean some human ears ears behave like those of bats some behave like dogs <laughs> human ears i mean not humans humans also do <laughs> but nevertheless theoretically theoretically uh, if n1 minus n2 is not larger than say 10 12 or maximum 15 hertz then the interval delta t between two large sounds can be distinguished we can hear them clearly but if n1 minus n2 becomes like 100 then the delta t becomes so small that it will just appear one after the other and you will not be able to distinguish between successive large sounds this is what it's going to transpire and each large sound is called a beat each large sound there is a large sound produced at this instant that's a beat at this instant another beat another beat 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 it okay so these are beats the interval between two successive beats is 1 by n1 minus n2 this is the interval between two successive beats right that's a time interval between two successive beats the number of beats per second therefore number of beats per second is 1 by delta t which is n1 minus n2 would be the number of beats per second number of beats per second got me this is essentially the beat phenomena this is the beat phenomena that you may have known before right and this will happen if locally that means you are observing a uh, superimposition at a given point of two sound waves differing not too much in their frequency that is when you will observe successive large sounds clearly audible and distinguishable right right so that's another kind of superimposition <coughs> 